If I don't follow the methodology of normalization, I will be ending up with a lot of redundancy data. What exactly these normal forms is all about? Suppose if I have two times name as a name of the column for two columns, then that rule is not satisfied. We have a concept called super key. So which is a combination of more than one column name or a key. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session in DBMS. Guys, we are going to discuss something about normalization. What exactly normalization is all about? This is going to be a very, very important topic if you guys are going to become a database designers, right? So guys, let me start from the scratch and uh, you will have a lot of content in this session. Without wasting much of your time, let me discuss or let me tell you what exactly that I have in this session. So guys, in this session, I will be discussing what exactly normal form is all about. That is what I will call as a normalization. And then what are the different types of normalization is what we will be discussing is what I have listed here. That's going to be the first normal form to uh, BCNF. Okay, so this is what I will call it as a BCNF voice equal normal form. In between, we also need to understand there are some few technical terms. Uh, that's going to be the functional dependency, partial dependency, transitive dependency. So I will be discussing that in between. So that's going to be the concepts for the day. All right. So let's start with the first thing that I have normalization. Guys, if I have my table, imagine. So what is table? So those who are uh, now coming for my session for the first time. Okay. So guys, imagine I have a combination of rows and columns. Okay. So that is what I will be calling it as a table. So why do I have this table? I will be storing the data, okay, in the form of rows and columns. That is what I will be calling it as a table. So when I'm storing the data, I have to follow some rules and regulations because I might end up with a lot of problem at the end. So what are the rules and regulations that you need to follow? So guys, if I don't follow the methodology of normalization, I will be ending up with a lot of redundancy data and lot of unwanted data and lot of anomalies okay anomalies in the sense mistakes the unwanted data so how do i remove or how do i overcome from all this problem so if you guys are using the concept called normalization so you can avoid all the different types of anomalies and also redundancy of data so now how do i achieve that so guys i have step by step explanation for that so let's start with that the first one, I have the different types of normalizations. So guys, in your syllabus, we have first normal form, second normal form, third and BCNF. So guys, this is what we will be studying for all of you according to your syllabus. What exactly these normal forms is all about? What is first normal form? What do you call or which state of the table do you call it as a first normal form? So let's understand that in detail one by one. So guys, if I want to call or if I want to say this table is in the first normal form, what should I do? Or what is the criteria it should satisfy? Point number one, listen to me carefully. For a table to be in a first normal form, it should follow the four rules. What exactly the first four rules? Listen to me. First one, it should only have the single value. What exactly the meaning of single value? Whenever I'm storing the data in a table, observe here. Uh, this one Bob programmer, all these things are the data. According to the first normal form, whenever I'm storing the data, I should have only one value in the box or for a column. So guys, if I'm storing the data in this place, I'm not supposed to have more than one value. That is the first point that you need to understand with respect to the first normal form. So fine, that is the first rule. Second rule, the value stored in the column should be of same domain. For example, here, what is the domain? So I have the name domain, okay? So I should store only name. Say for example, here I have stored Bob and here I am not supposed to store age. So that is the second rule that you need to remember. So fine. Third point, all the columns in the table should have unique names. So here I have employee ID as a name of this column and I have name as the name of this column job as the name of this column, department ID as the name of this column and skills is the name of this column. Suppose if I have two times name as a name of the column for two columns, then 
that rule is not satisfied. That is an error. I am not supposed to say that this table is in the first normal form. And the last point and the order in which the data is stored does not matter. In whatever the order the data you are trying to sort, so it does not matter. You can arrange the column names however you want. If you are satisfying these four rules to make a table or to store a data, then I will call that data or that table is in the first normal form. So that's what you need to remember. Sir, you said the first table, no single atomic value. So observe, this is an example. You're not supposed to store the values like this. I should have only one value. So this is what you need to remember with respect to the first normal form. All right, moving forward to the next uh, second normal form. What is second normal form? When do I call my table is in the second normal form? My dear students, it's very simple. First of all, my table should be in the first normal form. It should satisfy all the four rules what we have discussed. So that is the first point in the second normal form. The second point, and it should not have partial dependency. It should not have partially dependency. What exactly partial dependency? Say, for example, I will give you the money, okay, for everything. For you, If you want to manage yourself, imagine you are trying to manage your life and I'm giving you the money. You are completely dependent on me, okay? Second example, you are working, okay? You are earning some money, but it is not sufficient. So I am also giving you the money. So you are partially dependent on me, not completely. So like this, even in the table, it happens. What exactly that's up? Observe here. I have uh, five columns in this table. One is score ID, student ID, subject ID, marks, teacher. How many columns I have? Five. Observe here, using the score ID, I will be able to retrieve all this data. That's the speciality of the primary key. Cool? Okay, so fine. Now, you all know that there is a concept called candidate key or we have a concept called super key. So, which is a combination of more than one column name or a key, which forms the super key, which helps me to identify the record uniquely. Correct? Yes. So, now, guys, I have uh, marks. Let's take an example as marks. What is the name of the column? Marks. So, is this marks dependent on the student ID? Can I, can I identify this marks using the student ID? If you say yes, I have a challenge. Student ID is 10, okay? By just giving the student ID, is it possible for me to tell the marks? If that is the case, I have one more time. I have for 75. How do I identify? Because I have two marks. Uniquely, I, I, I want to access this. I want to access this 70. How do I access this 70? You will tell me, student ID. Because that same student also has got one more mark, 75. So for that, what should I do? I need to access student ID plus subject ID. Student ID plus subject ID will give me the marks. Correct? Correct or not? Yes. In the same way, teacher, observe here, Java teacher, okay? Java teacher is related to subject ID. In the same way, C++ teacher is related to subject ID. Java teacher related to subject ID. Correct? Now, this Java teacher is nowhere related to student ID. I repeat, Java teacher is nowhere related to student ID. That's what you need to observe. So, in this case, this concept is what I will call it as a partial dependency. This is what I will call it as a partial dependency. And observe this marks. This marks is nowhere related. I cannot, I cannot tell you the marks only with the student ID. So this concept is what I will call it as a partial dependency. There should not be any partial dependency. That is what you need to understand. With the help of this unique key, I should be able to access anything. So that is what I will call it as a functional dependency completely there should be a dependency. There should not be partial dependency. If there is a partial dependency, you make that as a separate table. That's how you will be removing the partial dependency. When you make a separate table for teacher and uh, subject ID. 
and student id with marks so you will be bringing or you will be breaking down this table into other two tables only then you are removing the partial dependency so if you want to say that table is in the second normal form check for the partial dependency also sir what is partial dependency see teacher is nowhere related to student id and marks is nowhere related to that's what you need to remember moving forward to the next one third normal form when do you say that third normal form first of all it should satisfy the second normal form and the next point that i have is it should not have transitive dependency just now we discussed the partial dependency now what is transitive dependency observe here a is dependent on b b is dependent on c this is what i will call it as a transitive dependency if i want to access this c first of all this a should help me if i don't get the help from this b i will not be able to access c this is what i will call it as a transitive dependency so this is what i will call it as a unique key this is what i will call it as a unique key this is what you need to remember unique key is dependent on any other non prime attribute and again this attribute is dependent on this so this is what i will call it as a transitive dependency that should not be there only then i will call that as a third normal form the next normal form that we have is bcnf what exactly this bcnf is all about first of all bcnf in the sense it should strictly follow the third normal form the next important point that you need to remember with respect to the bcnf is observe here always the left hand side okay the x should be a super key only then i will call that as a bcnf the left side attribute whatever i have so that should be a super key in the functional dependency that's what you need to remember the left side lhs whatever the values that you get so that should be a super key if you are satisfying that only then we will call that as a bcnf i think hope you enjoyed the concept of normalization very quickly thank you everybody